Welcome to Pomo Arts. Tonight we're streaming live for a virtual artist talk with Dion Smith Doki for their exhibition, Iris Atoll. I'm Janice Cotter, gallery manager. I would like to begin the evening by acknowledging that we are gathered on the shared unceded ancestral and traditional lands of the Coast Salish peoples, including Tsleil-Waututh, Kwikwetlam, Squamish, Musqueam, Katsi, Quaquat, and Stolo nations. As a small first step in the process of reconciliation, we make this acknowledgement to recognize, honor, and offer our gratitude for their enduring connection to and care for these lands, mountains, and waters. Our presence here is the result of a colonial legacy that is still unfolding in harmful ways. A land acknowledgement is just one small step towards a larger effort at reconciliation. As we gather virtually in Port Moody's Old City Hall, our very own local colonial seat of power to celebrate and make art, we think that it's the perfect opportunity to reflect deeply. We invite you to join us in carrying forward, the, forward these ref, reflections into meaningful reconciliation efforts and to hold us accountable for doing the same. Now I'd like to thank Pomo Arts Board of Directors, as well as our longtime supporters, the City of Port Moody, the Province of British Columbia for their support through the Community Gaming Program, and the Government of Canada for their support through the Canada Summer Jobs Program. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, it's great to be back for uh, another virtual artist talk. We started them at the beginning of the pandemic and uh, people seem to really enjoy the virtual aspect, sitting at home, having their glass of wine and tuning in with us. So I'm glad you're here this evening um, to join us for one of our 2022 Quiem Choi Exhibition Scholarship recipients, Dion Smith Doki. Dion graduated from the UB, uh, MFA program at UBC in August, 2021. They are a painter and a visual artist who says that meditation and translation are key operations in their practice. Through these, they conduct experiments with interference phenomena, mutation, pellicule, and envelopes in painting, drawing, and video. Dion grew up in the Peace River region of British Columbia and Alberta and is a member of the West Moberly First Nations. Oh, and now I am going to stop my share screen so you can actually meet Dion. <laughs> Welcome Dion. I meant to stop that a little bit sooner so people could see you when I was talking about you. Um, so I am going to uh, pass this to you so that you can um, tell us about your exhibition and we'll come back later. We'll ask people to uh, post questions they have for you in um, the chat on Facebook and we'll come back later and see if there's questions that people have for you. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Can you speak up just a titch? Let me just check that I've got my, oh, it might be me. Okay, just, but just speak up a titch, Dion, and I'm going to turn my um, um, microphone and camera off and let you take it away. You can share your PowerPoint. <laughs> Amazing, thank you so much. All right, uh, hello everyone. Uh, as thank you so much, Janice, for that introduction. Um, and as uh, Janice said, my name is Dion, and I'm uh, so grateful uh, that you've all uh, are joining us tonight for the artist talk. Um, and yeah, like Janice, I'd like to just first acknowledge that I'm an uninvited interloper on Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish homelands. And I think why I want to particular reason I want to acknowledge that is because my exhibition is in some ways about place and belonging and the work is informed if imperfectly by this reality that we share today and so I want to express my deepest and most extensive gratitude to the peoples and nations on whose land I lead my life. 
And yes, so, and Janice gave uh, my uh, biographical information. So I'm just gonna get into telling you about the talk. Um, and so I'm going to try and keep it at a nice pace, but a brisk pace because uh, there's quite a few, lot of things that I wanted to show you. Um, you might've had the chance to see some documentation of Iris Atoll or maybe have visited yourself. And if you haven't yet, I would strongly adore it if you did visit. Um, but yes, um, so I've divided the talk into small sections. Um, First, I'll walk you through my practice from 2017 to 2022. Um, I will then highlight previous streams of research and practice that are particularly relevant to understanding the exhibition. And following this, I'll describe the way I made the exhibition uh, from the initial studies and experiments to the production and installation processes. And then, as Janice said, we'll conclude with a um, short question and answer period. Okay, can everyone, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure everyone can hear me, so I'm just going to roll into it. So yes, I am a painter and visual artist, um, and in my earlier work, uh, I was very uh, interested in science fiction. I was interested in science fiction because of the different worlds it proposed. And so I found myself um, very interested thinking about space, uh, about geography, territory. Um, I would on like satellite and cartography, well, um, sort of sort of inform these um and another sort of characteristic practice at that point these are some drawings uh, as you can see another character just at the beginnings of me wanting to explore self-portrait self-representation um i think my it was reflecting i was like why not um, and I thought that it was sort of an ethical standpoint uh, where extraction, I wouldn't be extracting things from the world as I wouldn't be extracting, I guess, ideas from the world so much as the main idea would be trying to mutate myself into something or using my image as the beginning of something or other. And so, you know, the self sort of became like the material and source, like an object, an experiment, the patient, like someone, something receiving uh, the operation, whatever. Um, for instance, this is a self portrait I did. It's one of my favorite paintings. It's a painting someone called The Weirdest Thing They've Seen. Um, but, Anyways, <laughs> so that's my torso. And I put, uh, as you can see, a turtle's head and fins over top of it. Um, and in an Arctic landscape, at the time I was reading both Mary Shelley's first time, as well as two of Ursula K. Lewis novels, uh, The Heaven, The Left Hand of Darkness. All three novels, uh, in some way or another, deal with uh, the Arctic is a kind of non-space and that really fascinated me and so and all three novels deal with like humanness or like you know what is a human etc so I thought it'd be interesting yeah it's a way to bring all those sources together and to implicate myself in the process of like thinking uh these are images of clouds and water bodies of water found in northeast British Columbia Again, drawing on satellite imagery. Um, and so a lot of, most of my work is in oil painting, but I do adore uh, digital media as you'll see, uh, but also printmaking, you know, one of these one of these years, I'm gonna get back into it, but I, it was something I really, really enjoyed. And so at, at that time, uh, I experimented starting modeling software called Blender. And I would use it to create, I was very interested in creating these sens sensuous and angular, soft sort of space. And this, you know, fed into me uh, creating a series of uh, these cloudscape paintings. 
um, one of which it actually is the first Iris Atoll. Um, this was the first Iris Atoll, and I really wanted to revisit the ideas um, that I covered there. And so, I was um, I did a little bit about I mean. Uh, where it was delighted, but then I also realized that I need to be uh, clear in saying that it was in a world place that I know of. Um, it is the title of this painting, um, which I made in 2018, and it's one of my favorites. And so using 3D modeling in Blender, I created this virtual space and it provided the reference for, like I said, an angular, uh, ideally soft and sort of dreamy space. Um, and so Iris Atoll, it of course references the flower, um, the pigmented part of the eye, the light controlling mechanism in eyes and cameras, the rainbow and its goddess, uh, who is a conduit and a spectrum. It references islands, uh, the way satellites and clouds might be atoll-like. And this, uh, my interest and my belief in structures that morph and deform and uh, yeah become what you need. And so moving on, um, where are we at? Yes, this is just more sort of work I did starting in the 3D modeling software, drawing on satellite imagery. And yeah, so that was kind of my last couple of years at Concordia. Um, and then as, yeah, I spent two years in the UBC Master of Fine Arts and Digital Arts program. And so there I started to move away from dealing with figures and scenes into things that were more drag, much more not that. I was also interested in uh, like legibility and things, understanding. For instance, this is my take on like what an angel meant. My uh, belief, my 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 idea of representation and under like uh, intelligibility are they're still yeah important to me, and at the same time I was uh, falling in love with sea foam, and so. This sort of fit for me into the skies and water interest. Um, and I will um, show you some stills. Uh, source I've been working with is Carmen V6 from Sabah, which is a sort of uh, retail of the uh, figure, um, which is, yeah commonly taken up by queer artists, um, has been, always, maybe always, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyways, <clears throat> so that painting, this painting was developed from that movie and the painting is a very important turning point because I started to let go of needing to make something under, that I understood or that was like recognizable. Um, yeah. Letting the paint do some, do some more yeah, I was also very excited and interested in exploring scanning and scanners. Um, and the two central images, for instance, of opinion fed in sort of the best painting, uh, where I was using nerves and hands, body moves, gesture, to create these weird all things I'm not sure what images that I hope to revisit one and yeah at the same time so taking apart the painting my practice at the time uh, I did a bunch of, of water studies which was really was ex really exciting uh, and uh, very freeing my favorite images I've made that again I intending at some point in the future but as yeah I think it takes me about five years to go back. <laughs> so maybe in 2025. 
uh, the pandemic ended, of course, in 2020. Uh, and I was living at UBC at the time, uh, near to the studios, and I moved back up north with my parents for the summer. <clears throat> And so I continued uh, with my scanner work. These are scans of the film videos that I was making. Uh, and I was trying to see what would happen when I scanned a moving image, how it might morph and deform and bend and stretch. And these are also things, this is a process that I am excited to get back into now that I have more free time this summer. And yeah, I also, I also started to think about trying to not control every aspect of my paintings. Um, and the watercolor, I developed a process for making watercolor paintings that really relied on osmosis and diffusion uh, as like the way to spread, to draw the pigment and watercolor across the page. And uh, uh, these are colors are made of a single liquid watercolor. Um, something beautiful when you uh, sop up the, the water and wring it out and stretch the pigment across the page is that uh, the component pigments are revealed. And so these beautiful yellows and blues and oranges and even greens and reds sometimes appear. And I thought that was quite special. And so these are some later examples of uh, works that came out of that process. Uh, and I also, yeah, reading a lot and then I to experiment with styles, which uh, will come later. So I returned fall of 2020 and was keeping my wall clerk um, and working frantically on a bunch of seafoam videos. And <clears throat> so as part of the program, uh, myself and a cohort mates uh, put on an exhibition called Coordination Complex. Um, and I used, uh, I, I wasn't, I was kind of working stuff out. So anyways, I had three different works in that. A uh, monitor mounted on the ceiling playing a video loop. I had my seafoam video uh, projected as, as nearly the size of a painting. And then, of course, three large uh, watercolors. And so I'm just going to skip ahead to the watercolors. Uh, what's notable about them is that the side that you see uh, when you're looking at them, it's the side that faced the floor when I was working on them. And so I would pour water and ink and control the flow, control the redistribution of like the, both the pigment and like the water. And so that <clears throat> um, these different washes and gradients would uh, form. And of course, uh, being that the uh, this side of the page was facing the ground, uh, these like very gorgeous air bubbles formed. And I was just like, yeah, this was like a very happy sort of uh, discovery for me. Here's a closer look. They're about <clears throat> six and a half feet by five and a half feet, maybe. A little less than five feet. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so, yeah, I was also working on <clears throat> different oil painting studies and uh, Spending a lot of time alone. So, and I'll get back to that. Um, in this, I had to begin to think about what I wanted to present at the graduation exhibition. And so I procrastinated and did a lot of little things to kind of try to get back in the mood. <laughs> But I also uh, started to draw on, revisit videos I made that in the fall of 2020. And what I would do is perform for my webcam um, and try to see what I could make with the resulting images. But I'll get into that later. Anyways, these, this sort of like work resulted in a couple of sketch, um, a number of sketches that eventually a series of paintings 
and yeah, it was, this was such a sweet, uh, the paintings measure, I think, eight feet tall by seven and a half feet wide, um, other than the fourth one, uh, which I'll point out, which is eight by eight feet. Um, and yeah, it was a very, very, I just loved doing this. And so this is the eight by eight feet one. And thank you to Michael Barrick for these images. Um, and so the show was uh, very, it was an uh, intense process uh, making the paintings. And so once they were finished and installed, I sort of started to mess some around and lighter here. Explore you with the material. Yeah, I was doing lots of fun little study, just trying things out, and it was yeah a very enjoyable time. I do work on the sea foam uh, videos uh, and other videos as well, and yeah. So something that is coming out that was coming out for me, like going into the fall of uh, 2021, was fish, uh, squids of fish. I don't know why I'm obsessed with them, but I think they're gorgeous. So, anyways. Uh, I also participated in November in the uh, Health Initiative for Men's and Community-Based Research Center's BC Community Advocates Program, where I and a number of other artists attended a queer men's health conference um, and created work in response to that. And I was particularly taken by presentations on pleasure and research, uh, queer experiences of long-term housing, masculinity pressures, and the the I question of how queer people uh, can express agency over their and places. So I pretty paintings uh, lots of fun to explore something else. I think the this is that I like to try out new things. try to speed through a little. And so earlier this year in January, I, <clears throat> I with uh, the support of the BC Arts Council and the Thumb Gallery, thank you so much, uh, um, did a month long residency uh, where I created a, a series of uh, pastel drawings on paper, uh, exploring sort of a couple artists who I really, really love, uh, Simon Montaigne and uh, Marcel Kabe, who are like very texture oriented artists. And so, yeah, <laughs> that was like lots of uh, and work that I'm feeling about and I very dust work too. Dained a lot of my cheese um, work on the floor. So, um, what can you do? But it was like very, very exciting, no matter. And so, that is that. I wanted to, I, I'd like to switch focus now um, and talk about projects that really are, are at the center, previous projects that are at the center of Iris at all. And so in 2017, uh, I started to experiment with painting on acetate. I was very interested in transparency, but more so I was interested in the reflective quality of acetate. And so I would use it as a mirror um, and record my body in the paint. I was making a um, Professor Eric Simon. And that bring lots of doors in terms of getting out of my, expanding, expanding my way of doing things, I guess I'll say. And so the, I really delved into the acetate process and tried to push it as far as I could. And it was lots of fun. I really, really enjoyed making these pieces. Um, I got to play with light and shadow, color, pattern. Um, what else? 
here's a random collage I did that I never finished, but I just, <laughs> just loved it. But all of this work sort of culminated in a large uh, 20 foot, about 20 foot long by 36 inches tall uh, artwork that I called Reflecto Genesis. And again, it's very obsessed with aliens and uh, just science fiction, science fiction beings and non-humans, robots, whatever, what have you. And so all those different things fit into this large scale work. The first work I actually ever showed at an end uh, was called Two Hand Touching. It's a uh, really, really, yes, so I'm really grateful for. And it was very exciting to, to show this work. And, kind of see the culmination of this process of turning i was also doing lots of well not lots but anyways <laughs> this is the gradient painting i made color and so i this is where i'm going to get into the common strands uh especially with luscious arc and uh, reflective genesis and so uh i what I did to, because when I say that these paintings are about my body and about video, uh, people are sometimes um, uh, curious how that is. And so what I would do in the fall of 2020 and still um, to this day is I would perform, for my, perform on Zoom and OBS and Twitch. Like I said, I was very lonely. And so I would just get drunk and have <laughs> and make sketches. It was a lot of, it was, yeah, it was how I dealt with, um, how I dealt with it. And so, yeah, I was creating these live video performances and experimenting with feedback loops and green screens, uh, super musician and layering, uh, all these sort of like chromatic effects and these textural sort of things. Um, and it was all, I, what I wanted to do was try to bring a multitude of spaces that I enjoyed, the sky, the sea foam, my computer, my, you know, things like this, bring it all together into a new kind of body or a new kind of point. Uh, yeah, I would hold, uh, there's me, <laughs> I would hold my, I, oh yeah, so I would hold up a prism to my webcam as well, which would bend the image or bend the image that was being captured. And so what started to form were these beautiful arcs or arches or whatever, half circles. Um, so that was very, yeah, it was a very generative sort of thing. Uh, these like different planes and just, yeah, it was good. So anyways, I think why I really wanted to show you this uh, firstly to show you how I came up with these paintings uh, that it, it, as you can see I'm really grabbing grabbing a lot grabbing everything from these videos and putting it into the painting to try to make something and I think in Iris Atoll well not I think I know that I I drew upon the the structure of these paintings to inform how I would structure this these works, the panels in these works. These are recent uh, performances uh, <laughs> um, that I have yet to kind of uh, turn into something. Um, what I would need to say, yeah, I think like the experience of ecstasy and transport are things that interest me. And so I'm crying here, but it was like really fun. Um, <laughs> and so anyways, the, the common strand though is that uh, there's a reflective sort of, or device or uh, image transmitter that I then act in front of, or, you know, engage with and also create some kind of mutation from in between the surface and my body. And so, yeah, that was just something I figured out when I was preparing this presentation. So we can get into that a little more, but so, Preparing for Iris Atoll. 
what a fun process and what a challenging process. And so I started by experimenting with different inks and markers, water-based and alcohol-based. I ended up uh, using water-based markers uh, and also making, mixing my own so that I can control the markers, the fluid that I was using with different surfaces that I work well with transparent so the opportunity to experiment with things like bamboo, cheese ball, gauze, uh, and bows, which is a plastic polypropylene paper. Anyways, don't quote me on that. <laughs> and so it was a lot of fun. And I started to see that I would need something to focus on initially. And so I was thinking about these underwater flowers uh, that I saw once in a video called Ranunculus aquatilis. Uh, and as, it, as I write my uh, statement, they uh, expel oxygen bubbles when they photosynthesize. And I thought this was a really beautiful notion that these plants were creating a sort of positive void. And some the surf the plastic that I was also remind bubbles uh, because the walls were like mirrors or screens and they reflected the world around them like the sky above the water the surrounding flowers and the fish that would go by whatever and so in this in this new way Aristotle became about light and touch again um, so yeah here's the UPO studies uh, some watercolor markers um, it was yeah lots of fun and the studies became more focused at this point and I would hang them and my house was just full of plastic with colors on it <laughs> and yeah here's me looking taking a picture of myself through my drawing uh the white stuff on my face is pimple cream uh I was just so stressed you know <laughs> but yeah it was a fun sort of like process of like getting kind of psyching myself up, but then also getting a sense of like what the materials would do and how I could best yeah, take advantage of their qualities. And so I'm gonna speed through this a little. It's just, just pictures. And so this led into the production phase uh, and that work, which was also a lot of fun. Also, I was, how I was what these would look though like. there's a lot of tension of thing the mark not permanent and so I didn't have to commit to anything actually I started to get an idea of what I wanted to do how I might structure the each panel and what sort of imagery images and textures and forms I would need uh, yeah so as you can see this it took over my house my living room um and it was a lot of fun but it was also very daunting to see a big table with plastic on it every day um oh yeah and yeah eventually uh late march uh a couple of the panels fused together and so they're coated with a special gel that allows water-based media to sit on top of them without being or uh, immediately sort of like the way and of course there I water so when I uh, laid a couple panels on top of each other uh, without thinking they eventually fused together and I wrecked a bunch of pieces uh, and also the pieces would just stick to themselves um, and if I had been thinking which I eventually did, uh, I would have just got a coated paper to put in between them. But it's good to yeah learn to be uh, conscientious. <laughs> and so anyways, that was really stressful. And I started a new series of marker drawings on UPO that I was I, I had to like have a backup, right? Uh, and so I'm really excited to get back into this this summer, because uh, it's a lot of fun. Here's what I made or the first sort of like idea I had. Here's me in front of it, trying to remain happy and calm and positive. <laughs>
but eventually, and so the issue is that uh, this plastic was kind of hard to source uh, and shipping could take anywhere from a couple weeks to a couple months. And so I was calling all across Canada and the US um, and eventually more material arrived. And so I was able to really jumpstart the process. And yeah, it was lots of fun. It was pretty, pretty standard. Uh, there's no, other than the, the things fusing together, there's no real huge hiccups. And so, yeah, this, I dived into it. I one of the packing, how it is. And so then I mission. And this was the first time. Hello, I'm sorry, we seem to have lost Dion. Um, I know we were having some difficulties with his um, uh, internet cutting out. So I'm hoping that he will be right back. We'll keep an eye out for him. But in the meantime, um, I'll just tell you a little bit uh, about the space, um, it's installed in our uh, Suncor Gallery, um, Iris Atoll, and um, it is quite an interactive, immersive installation that you can walk through and interact with. Um, oh, Dion's back. Okay. Dion, did you want to turn your I'm camera sorry. back on? Your microphone's off. I don't have sound for you. Oh, hello. Hello. I can. Oh, here he is. Can you hear me now? I can oh. hear you now. We seem to be having difficulties with you freezing the internet on your end or. Oh, no. Was so, it happening throughout the talk? Pardon me? Was it, was it really interrupting the talk? It did happen throughout the talk, but there was nothing I could do to uh, fix it on this end. Um, but a, a lot of it you could hear, but there were some interruptions on it, some freezing. Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. Should we, I, I really don't have that much left in the presentation and we could just go into the question period. Um, well, I sort of wanted that you haven't quite got to the images of the exhibition, the current exhibition. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can. I'm, and I'd really like you to share that. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I'll turn off my camera uh, no. and share my screen. Okay. Well then, are you going to talk still then about it? Yeah, oh yeah, for okay. sure. I'm gonna turn my camera off too. Perfect, okay. Sorry, everyone, I just just rolled with it, you know? So yeah, and I was assuming everyone can steer, still hear me. Right, Janice? Yes, we can still hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so yeah, this was the first time I was seeing these pieces uh, in the flesh and it was super exciting. And so the challenge was how to install, how to make make everything sparkle, so to speak. And that was like a bit challenging. Um, just in terms, I was, I just, yeah, I was really stressed. It was a couple of days before the exhibition and I just wanted it to go well. Um, but it was a really lovely process of discovery. And eventually, you know, even though I was really in love with sort of the reflections that the panels would capture from the sky, um, I decided to close the windows just so that lighting uh, could really um, work in its mouth, I guess. And yeah, so these are pictures of the insulin. 
as you can see, it's uh, again um, and kind of becomes this big. We've lost your sound again, Dion. You've frozen, I think. So until Dion comes back, I'll just uh, speak a bit to the um, installation. Dion, Dion, chime in anytime when your sound comes back. Um, there are uh, six panels in the room and Dion worked really hard on the spacing of them so that they would be interactive. Oh, we've lost Dion again. Okay, sorry about that. Um, Dion worked really um, hard to make sure that the spacing was um, you set so that you could walk throughout them. Oh, he's back. And uh, the lighting also was a challenge. And I think he did a wonderful job in surmounting that challenge. Do you wanna talk a little bit about the lighting? Because we went over that that was one of the biggest issues. I thought it would be the hanging part, but it was the lighting. It was, but it was just a matter of experimenting a bit more and just seeing what worked. And I, yeah, getting up and taking down the lights and redoing it. Um, eventually I found something that I felt was, yeah, was working good. Okay, that's great. Sorry, I'm just looking, I can see, uh, that Star made a comment on here. Um, oh, the auto-generated captions were working well. Good. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm watching it on my phone as well as the, on there. Um, I, I wanted to, do you want to talk a little bit about the install process? Because that was something that from the very beginning was kind of, um, we'll see what happens you know even though you yeah. had it well planned i i knew it was an experiment I wanted to do um yeah. but i just had no i yeah it was just a matter of kind of like envisioning it uh running through it in my mind step by step beforehand and then making adjustments of course uh in consultation with you uh yeah it was it i was a bit scared of the installation but it worked out you know i knew that it would work somehow I just uh, was really hope. Yeah, uh, what happened? What the result is something I'm very pleased with, of course. And so it was just, it, I, yeah, I was uncertain just exactly what and how. Yeah. Well, and I know that um, with the lighting, I remember the first install day, you were kind of discouraged, even though it looked amazing. It wasn't what uh, the picture that you had in your mind. And so I think going home and sleeping on it and cons you had consultation on, um, on FaceTime. And I think that helped as well uh, to help you sort out the issues. So you were happy with the lighting in the end. Oh. No, definitely. Thank God for my mom. <laughs> Um, so do you want, do you want to speak to the goals for the lighting? Uh, I can like a little bit. It was just that I just, in terms of the entire exhibition, what I was excited about was, uh, the lighting projecting the colors outward. And so again, as I mentioned, uh, just thinking about light and touch, uh, in a different way, in a way that I hadn't in my practice before, but that, you know, I had been circling around. And so I, I'm not in my, I'm not gonna share my PowerPoint, my internet seems to crash, but I had a picture of myself uh, at the, against one of the walls in the exhibition space um, with these beautiful stained glass sort of daubs uh, behind me and on top of me. And of course, during the installation uh, and yeah, I was uh, coming down with a, a bit of a sickness. <laughs> and so I, I'm almost positive that was making me feel more stressed than I needed to be. But of course, high pressure, right? And I was really, really hoping for 
this to work out and it did so it worked out beautifully um i, I you know i really want to encourage people to come and see the exhibition because um, this installation, as I explained, is it's immersive and interactive, and you really need to uh, go in and be part of it. And when Dion's um, compared it to the underwater flowers and the underwater bubbles, that's um, exactly what you feel like when you walk in there, that you are in um, kind of an underwater, shimmery environment. It's uh, it's quite an interesting um, experience walking through it and seeing the reflections on your skin or your clothing. Um, and you would, uh, in talking about the, uh, uh, sorry, that just reminded me uh, about the markers. You experimented with different kinds of markers, the water, different kinds of water markers. And I and I and so I just got cheapies from Nasser's that I love. I have a huge bucket of them in my on my table table here, and so that was like really yeah, it was amazing to get to experiment and also to end up being able to also to start to make my own of control per lost the colors. Something so, I think oh. on to what you were saying. Oh, sorry. No, you were cutting out. So I wasn't sure when you were done talking. I'm so sorry. Oh. No. Oh, uh, I've lost your camera again, Dion. Oh, I turned it off just to make sure my audio doesn't glitch. Okay. Okay. Well, then we'll just continue our conversation. Um, so the one thing I wondered is now you've done this body of work um, for the exhibition here, and I know that you've had uh, several residencies along the way, um, you've worked on different types of work. What are your next steps? I am not sure <laughs> i'm not sure but i am uh i'm just yeah it's been really nice uh i had to sit in an isolation period and i made a bunch of oil painting studies uh, i'm excited to continue with the markers and see what happens uh working on fabric and different kinds of plastic uh and making more videos it's just yeah it's a slow sort of grind just moving all the areas forward and seeing what happens I, I'm really excited to, you know, uh, rig up a fil an air filter for my house so that I can do big oil paintings. Um, so that is just gonna be, yeah, that'll happen in the next couple of weeks. Oh, well, that's good. So you have your uh, work cut out for you over the summer. Yeah, hopefully not. I'm hoping to be at the beach um, <laughs> every, every day. All day. Um, okay, so the, the <laughs> fall, you'll you'll start the indoor oil painting work in the fall. I'll do, I'll, yeah, okay. I'll just be at the beach in the daytime anyways. Um, well, uh, for tonight then, I think, would you, oh, yes, thank you for coming back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would really like to thank you for being here and for all your work and um, working so closely uh, in with me on guiding you, you know, through the Quiem Choi process and the exhibition thing. And it's just been such a joy to to work with you, Dion. And uh, I'm so glad to have you here this evening to tell us about the exhibition. Yeah, let me just finish off by saying thank, thanking you so much, uh, thanking, uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, to not only sort of like expand my practice and experiment and learn, but also in some small way, uh, you know, help to contribute to the legacy of Kui Am Choi. Uh, and so, yeah, thank you so much. This has been like really, I've learned a lot and it's been really awesome. So thank you. I've well, learned I think really oh. terrible internet. 
<laughs> and I think with every every body of work and every you know it's been such an experimental process that you were bound to have lessons to take forward to the next body of work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Well, um, Dion, uh, I'll say thank you, and I hope you'll be in the gallery. Um, coming by to with friends and family to see the show again. And don't forget to let me know if you will be dropping in. And uh, do you wanna say good night to everyone? Thank you. How many people came? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll check in there. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, thank everyone for coming. What tends to happen sometimes is that, especially on sunny evenings, people come back and watch the next oh, yeah. day. Too. Yeah. Oh, God. Thank <laughs> you all so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, being part of one of our virtual artist talks at Pomo Arts. And we'll be back again next week with our, um, our other Quiam Choi Exhibition Scholarship recipient, Connor McKinnon, for his exhibition. Um, uh, whoops, uh, a fragmented history, Port Moody. So thank you very much. And we will say good night. Okay, you can stay on though, Dion, don't go away. I'm going to end the Facebook video. Good night, folks. <laughs>